Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In the last episode, Rocky Lotka and I explored a curious situation with Blazor Web Apps and .NET 8. When you're using the per page or component location for interactivity, you can't use cascading parameters or scoped services and expect them to maintain state when you switch render modes. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'm introducing a new system that uses gRPC on the client and the server to keep a server-side dictionary of state information in a cache. The client can then get and set that data as needed. Furthermore, there's a notification system that works in the background to notify all of the clients when one client changes the state. A potential solution to this pernicious state problem is coming up right now, right here on Blaze the Train! Okay, so let's start out with a repo, uh, github.com slash carlfranklin slash grpc state service provider. Yes, I said grpc because we're going to be calling back from the client to the server where the state is actually kept using gRPC, which is stinky fast. And you might think gRPC is kind of overkill for this, but once we start getting into it, you'll see that it's kind of necessary. Otherwise, you could use something like a web API, but that's going to be slower, and gRPC is much faster at this. What's more, um, I'm going to configure it all so that to you, the developer, it's invisible. All right, so let's take a look at this repo. This readme starts with the story. GRPC state service provider fixes a problem with .NET 8 Blazor web apps where scoped services are repeatedly created and destroyed, making state persistence impossible. And what's more, cascading parameters will just go null if you're on a per page, per component level, right? If that's your interactivity location, per page, per component. If everything is global, it all works fine, as you've seen in my uh, app state uh, episodes. But if it's not in global mode, that means that every page has to have, if they want interactivity, you have to set it, right? And if you cross render boundaries, meaning that you go from a page that has static server-side rendering to a page that has WebAssembly, and then back to a page that doesn't have interactivity, and then back to a page that does, every time you go back and forth, those things just get destroyed again. So it's impossible to keep state. Now, this is not technically a bug because they designed it this way. They designed it so you could sprinkle interactivity in a Blazor web app wherever you want it. But I think you'll agree with me that Blazor developers uh, who have been using it since, you know, five, six, seven, whatever, are used to the fact that we have state. And this is new, right? W without state, we can't, you know, we can't hold on to variables in between page uh, visits. And so it becomes kind of this missing feature that we wish we had. So that's what we're doing. Now, I won't go through this whole thing and read everything for you. You can do it your own on your own time. But suffice to say, we're going to get a cookie with JavaScript uh, on the client, and that is going to be your ID for your session. All right. And then on the server, we're keeping a dictionary uh, a, of a string key with a byte array, uh, and that is going to hold the state, a byte array for each client. The byte array is a, you know, a, a, a serialized JSON string, if you will. So the JSON string is serialized, then converted to a byte array, and it's sent up this way. Now, this isn't particularly the best way to do this. In fact, um, when I ran this by Steve Sanderson, he thought this was a great idea, by the way. He said, this is really cool. However, it needs a little tweaking. And this is the first thing that he mentioned, you know, because 
we're single threaded, you know, we're multi-threaded, we have problems with this, this could be an issue. So something like a Redis cache would go well here, but, but it's a proof of concept. On the server side, you can implement whatever mechanism you want to, uh, to handle the state or to store the state. All right, so we get a cookie and then we have our app state variables, right? And we also have an interface, iAppState. Now you could call this whatever you want. It could be, you know, uh, imystuff.cs and mystuff.cs, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. But you have an interface and an implementation with all of the properties that you want to have in state. And yes, they can be more than just messages, you know, strings and integers. They can be complex objects. It doesn't really matter. You're going to serialize them, turn them into byte arrays before you send them. Okay. So then we have a base class for a component, app state provider base, and you pass it in the generic type app state or whatever your state is. You're also going to implement the interface. You just pass on the getters and setters to the base, get property value and set property value for each parameter. And this is going to set is going to take care of making sure that it gets persisted uh, and on the server and get is going to make sure that we have uh, an ID and we get something from the server. Uh, if it's there, if it's not, we just return the default value. Uh, so all of the goo is handled right here. And this is all you really have to do in your implementation. So let's start here in the repo where we're going to create a demo app. In the demo app, we can make it as uh, an auto or a WebAssembly app. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose WebAssembly. So it's going to be a WebAssembly, and instead of global mode, we're going to be per page or component. OK. Now you can see we have both a server app and a client app. This is a WebAssembly uh, app, as I said before. So on the server side, everything that's statically rendered goes over here and everything that you want the server to do. So we're going to need a couple of gRPC packages here, a gRPC ASP.NET Core and gRPC ASP.NET Core Web. You can copy these right out of the repo, but it's probably a good idea to use the NuGet uh, Manage NuGet Packages window and see if there are any updates for it. And there are not. And while you're here, Go ahead and search for gRPC state service provider. But I don't want to just add this to the server app. I want to add it to both. So I'm going to go to the solution and manage NuGet packages for solution. Here I'll search for my gRPC state service provider. There it is. And I'm just going to select project so it gets installed into both projects. Okay, now go to program on the server project. And right before we build the builder, add this little guy. Builder.services configure state services. And we're going to pass the URL to the local server. And the reason is, is that because there's that state in which everything is running on the server, when it's pre-rendering. And so for that to work, we need to consider this a client. And so this configure state services right here configures both a server and a client configuration on the server. One line of code. Now we obviously have to change this port. So we'll go to properties, launch settings JSON, go down to HTTPS, and there it is right there, 7274 in my case. So I'll just change that. Now we have to also configure the pipeline. So right after I create app, I'm going to say configure state server middleware, 
And that's going to add the middleware things that we need on the server as well. Now let's configure the client. First with some packages. So we want Google Protobuf, gRPC net client, gRPC net client web, gRPC tools, get the latest versions of those, and you're good to go with the configuration. Now let's configure the code. This one's a little bit more involved. So I'm trying to wrap all this up in a single extension. is isn't working yet. I could probably get it to work if I had some more time. But be that as it may right now, this is what we need. We need a new HTTP client with a base address set to the builder host environment base address. And then we need all the goo to create our gRPC client, the app state transport client. Now you never have to use this directly, but it is used by the tool. So it has to be there in the configuration. Next, I'm gonna to go to imports razor, underscore imports razor and add these two using statements here, using gRPC state client and using state notification service. The notification service is there to keep all of the instances of your state control in sync. So the state provider is a component. We can't use cascading parameters so we don't have single instances that we can share. However, uh, you do have this state notification service and it's required on the back end. You don't have to use it yourself. The client takes care of all of that. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure if I need this here in my imports, but I'm going to keep it there anyway. But once you see how easy this is to use, you're going to want to use it everywhere. All right, now let's add our app state classes. So I'll add I app state. Again, you could call this anything that you want. I've just got a message, an account, and then I'll add app state, which is the implementation of this interface that uh, creates a message property and account property. All right, now let's add also in the client our app state provider razor component. Now what we have here is a render fragment parameter called child content, which we're gonna display. So how do we use this? Well, let's go to counter and replace everything with this. So here's my counter. I still have my render mode, which is very important. Otherwise we get nothing. And around my content, I've got my app state provider. Uh, and I have a reference to an app state provider, app state right down here. And so that has the properties count and message, right? So now anytime I want to, you know, update count or message, I just do it and all that base class stuff takes care of everything else. All right. So here I'm showing the count. I can increment the count, which does app state dot count plus plus, and I can update the message. We don't have anything that shows it really, but we're saying hello from counter at blah, blah, blah. All right. Also on after render async, if it's the first render, I have this loaded because I only want to show this stuff if we're loaded. In the world of uh, per page, per component, or even in pre-rendering, you have this issue where uh, everything is just static until that first render happens. All right, now let's just run it and see what happens. Here we go. Hello world. Go to counter. Everything loads up. Increment the counter. Go back home, the counter is there, boom. All right, now let me show you how to do notification by creating a toolbar that will show the message and when I mutate it, it will show in the toolbar. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new Razor file called Toolbar Razor. So here's my app state provider and I've got my message that I'm showing in here if we're loaded. And we're only loaded after that first render. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to add that to the layout up here in main layout. Right here where I normally have this about line. I'm just going to say toolbar. And that's really all we have to do. Toolbar is just displaying the message. But the notification happens magically. Well, not magically. There's a notification service, right? 
There it is. Hello from counter. And of course this still works. Now this might seem pretty simple, but remember in per page per component mode, you don't have state unless you're doing something like this. So this is a good start, but I'm sure it's going to evolve and get more and more simple. Uh, I know that Steve Sanderson likes it so far. Uh, he did tell me that there's a few things, you know, security issues and stuff like that that need to be addressed. So I wouldn't use this in production quite yet, but watch that repo for updates and improvements. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. In case you missed it, here's the URL to the repo where all this goodness is hanging out. I'm hoping some of you passengers will stop by on your way to the cafe car and check it out. Who knows? You could be changing the course of history. Hey, at least this train will arrive on time. Whoa, whoa! Thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Place a train!